Hello, Nick. It's unfortunately Friday. <sighs> yep, you guessed it. I missed a video yesterday. Granted, I did have a pretty good couple of reasons. Primarily, that show that I was on, that I played guitar on, as a preview to that show that I did by myself where I played guitar, Potsdam Tonight with Rob Velty, ran for an unprecedented two hours and started at an unprecedented 10 o'clock. Normally when I do videos on Thursdays, in particular Thursdays that are Potsdam Tonight Thursdays, I have time at the end of the day to still make you a video. But because Potsdam Tonight was two hours long and started at 10 o'clock, I had two hours less than normal during the time that I would normally do the video. And I couldn't miss it because I was helping Rob film for the show. And then before that, Megan had a reading at which she read her poetry people, which is required for one of her classes, but still really cool. And she did a really good job, and her poems are lovely. And before that, I was in a class called Young Adult Literature, and I had to tell them a super secret secret that I was so excited to tell them, that I'm so excited to tell you. If you think you're ready, you're not ready. So Nick, just three days ago, I posted this video. I have just finished reading this book. It's called Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. So yeah, Nick. That day that I posted that video, I got a friend request on Facebook from this guy named Corey Whaley. And I was like, who's Corey Whaley? Oh, wait. Corey Whaley, the author of Where Things Come Back, and I just chatted on Facebook for a while. And he's a really cool dude. I mean, not that I expected him to be uncool, but he was more cool than I anticipated. And he's a jokester. He's definitely a jokester. But so we talked for a while, and then eventually he was like, hey, like, I should Skype your class because I'm not traveling anymore for a while because I have some stuff to do. Super secret stuff that I can't tell you about. And I was like, yeah, that would be great. Let me tell my professor. So I told my professor, and my professor was like, oh, cool. And I was like, oh, cool. And then we were like, John Corey Whaley. So since then, I've been trying to figure out some things with my professor of that class and Corey Whaley himself. And I think as of uh, late yesterday, we arranged a Skype meeting in which he'll be Skyping with my class uh, on Monday, right before or right after our final, which I'm super excited about. On top of all that, the video that I made was evaluated by the rest of the students. All of our presentations were evaluated by, like, ourselves. Peer-reviewed, you might say. And my video, which was my presentation, my video to you, won. It was voted the best one of all by the rest of the students. So I won this bookmark for participating in the challenge. And look what's on the bookmark. It's a robot, my favorite. Also this pin, I read banned books. I won this because I was in the top three. And because I was the number one winner, I got to choose three books for free. Free. Three free books. This one, which is actually a manga called Soulless. This one, which if I had to judge by its cover, it kind of looks like Gossip Girl or something, but set in the 1920s, called Hattie Ever After. And this one called The Looking Glass Wars, which I picked because it has cool robots on the front, but when I opened it up, I realized that it was like some sort of like weird science fiction that had to do with Alice in Wonderland, and I don't really know if I was more or less excited about it. I think I was a little bit less excited about it, but I will read it nonetheless. Also, look at all this cool stuff that Caitlin got me for my birthday. This Night Skywatcher, Journey Into Space Jr. This postcard from Nevada. This postcard from Nevada. This postcard that has Nevada's state flag. And incidentally, shows the state motto, which is Battleborn. Also, this picture of Nevada that didn't come out quite as good as she had hoped. And this really nice birthday card with Nevada on the cover. She got me all these Nevada things because she knows that I really like that. It's like my favorite thing, right after robots. She also got me this book, which funnily enough is called How Many Elephants in a Blue Whale? And then right on the cover it tells you the answer. And that's not all that happened this past week. Look at this. I'm in the school paper. And you're in the school paper. And this picture of me that's completely unrelated to the concert that I played is also in the school paper. I'd like to address the fact that because I missed a video, you are now allowed to challenge me. However, because even after a month, you still have not sent me the fun dip that I rightfully won in our pumpkin challenge, I am immune to any challenge you give me until 
You send me the fun dip and watch me eat it. No fun dip, no challenge. Finally, to address your question of why Potsdam, I'd like to tell you a story. Nick, when I was in high school and it was time to apply for college, I had no idea what to do. And even when I finished applying, I still really didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. Because the idea of college, the idea of future, didn't really mean anything to me at that time. It wasn't really important. So what happened was, I applied to three different schools. And when I say three, I actually mean two. Because I only half applied to SUNY Purchase. Because I went there, and I didn't think the campus was very nice to look at. Which is actually more important than you might think. At least to me. So I applied to SUNY New Paltz and SUNY Potsdam. SUNY Potsdam I applied to as my safety school. Which basically means like, you're almost guaranteed to get in. I applied to New Paltz as the place that I really wanted to go. Unfortunately, my grades weren't quite where I wanted them to be, and weren't quite where SUNY New Paltz wanted them to be either. But I did a really good job writing my college essay, according to my English teachers in high school. So I was really confident that I would get in, but I didn't. And uh, so I ended up here. <laughs> as you know, I deferred my entrance and ended up here after living for a year in Peru. And then I met some really good people and learned a lot of new and cool and interesting things, both about myself, about other people, and about the world. I'm very happy with the life that I'm living right now. And I don't know if I would feel so fulfilled if I had gone to any other school. And I haven't transferred from the school for a couple of good reasons. First of all, Potsdam is a really good school. It's a good school because there's something here for everyone, which leads to an extraordinarily diverse campus, which I really like. At the same time that it's diverse, it's also really small. We're a campus of between four and 6,000 students, I think, and it's not hard to see a familiar face on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really enjoy that too about the campus. Additionally, it's beautiful. This particular part of the country, this particular part of our state, is really lovely and not too far away from the mountains. I think that had a lot to do with my comfort here. As far as like academics go, I don't think that this is the best education that I could get. I don't feel like I've been challenged as much as I could be challenged. That said, it has given me a real opportunity to develop socially and also develop the way that I think about the career in which I'd like to find myself eventually. Writing. So please let me help you with the application process, because it might not make sense to you. Although, you're really smart, so it might make a lot more sense to you than it did to me. But I also really want to help you when it gets to be that time. But don't think about it yet, because you still have a long way to go. Three years is a, is a good long time, so hang on to that for right now. I'm really sorry I missed a video yesterday, and I'm glad I could get you this one today, even though it's late. And I'd like to ask you one final question. What is your favorite song from the doo-wop era? I'll see you tomorrow.